Well, so much for a day for the breakaway. So much for Tade Pogacar taking it in any way easy. Adam, i got to say you called it. There was no chance of them giving up the Mario Rosa nah. today, was there? Not at all. Well, it's not surprising, but it's quite surprising that the way they did it. I mean, there's Tate holding on to the pink jersey, but then there's winning the stage. I thought a breakaway... <laughs> I'll get my words out. <laughs> I thought for a breakaway might go, yeah. um, but they just kept it on such a short lease today and probably exactly for that, they must have planned it early on and, I mean, it's fairly dominant. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's, as you would say, bonkers. Mm. Jonathan, it's interesting listening to Rafa Micah there because you had said just before we came on air that was almost a surprise that when he's got that kind of form and clearly so much better than everyone else, really, he could have attacked from 3K out and taken an extra minute, maybe. Yeah. Rafa Micah also thought, you know, are we going to attack nice and early, take another chunk of time? And Polk said, no, take me all the way to the line. What do you make of that? Yeah, I, I don't really know what to make of it. I mean, clearly he was fresh enough. Um, clearly he had the legs to take a bunch of time out of everyone else. Clearly he wanted to win the stage, but he decided to win the stage in a very economical mm. fashion, which might mean he's already thinking ahead to the third week and saying, well, I can win the stage without actually expending any extra energy, mm. and I don't actually need the extra time because I'm going to take that somewhere else anyway. Um, like I said, it's a... He's being generous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't describe it as generous. But... <laughs> I'm letting you all think that there might be a bit of a chance, but no, uh, it's not really me. <laughs> he's ridden economically for him, but a couple of his teammates might say no, that, no. that wasn't mm -hmm. very economical. You know, um, Mikael Björg and uh, Stack Langen just did so many K on the front chasing that break, but aiding them was that the break really wasn't cohesive. I and mean, with no. 14 guys out there, they should have been able to rip out a big gap yeah. and they just sort of hung out there... There were a lot of passengers in the group and nobody seemed to be really driving it like they needed to, like they, they would have needed. That's always a problem, though, isn't it? Towards four minutes. Yeah, yeah, big breaks, you're always going to get passengers. But well, it's also be... was a big break that took so much to get into it. I mean, a, a great rider like Philippe was unable to contribute anything yeah. mm -hmm. once he got there. You know, all of his bullets were spent just yeah. getting to the break. Going to be a little bit nitpicky then because we have to pick holes in Taddy Pogacar wherever we might find them. And, Rob, are you talking about the work that UAE put into today? Jonathan, I'm curious what you think of that, because they did, and, and Tari has talked about the danger for his team in week three, whether they're going to have the legs to protect him quite so much. We're looking at the possibility of other teams being able to isolate him. So he did a lot of work today, when probably Tari could have taken more time so was that a clever use of energy on the day, do you think, for the yeah, team I mean, as a whole? Those two guys you're talking about, I mean, they turned themselves inside out to keep that gap down. And that's an interesting call. I mean, again, they're, they're, they're going to be tired, you know, by the third week. You know, Pogachar, I don't know, isolated, I'm not sure is really the right word because mm -hmm. I don't think there's, there's a team that's strong enough to really isolate Tade. But at the same point in time, is he going to really wear his team thin? Probably so. I mean, they're clearly inspired in this moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're clearly riding over their heads in this moment, and that's good. But, you know, the adrenaline only lasts so long. Yeah. I think eventually they'll be get exposed. I mean, they left two riders behind right from the get-go. First climb, they were missing two riders. They used the two riders we've spoken about, uh, Langen and Björk, to do the, the pace setting all day. But when it came to the, the final climb, we saw Grossgartner set the pace for quite a while, and then it was Raf Maker. But... This is not the biggest mountain stage yeah. we're going to get, and we didn't get these long mountain passes early in the stage. I'm talking about the Cat 1s and all category climbs early in the stage. They're the things, I think, that can bring the rest of Pogaccia's team undone and leave him isolated. But the problem is for the rest that he can probably just clean up the mess himself because he looks so dominant on yeah. the climb. Is it a risky strategy team-wise then, do you think, Adam, or is it a case of... It's Tade, so it probably doesn't really matter. If we take all the tactics out of it and what was happening up the road today, probably... Sorry, yes, it would be. But if you look at the race situation up the road with such big groups going up the road, they were just controlling it all day. Yes, they could have let the gap go out more. But ultimately, once they're riding at a certain tempo, it's going to come back anyway. So you imagine if they get onto that final climb and they start racing, they start attacking from behind, that's going to be more effort for Tade than probably what it would have been if they'd have had to just backed off a little bit anyway. So, it's not the greatest situation to yeah. ride on the front like that, but tomorrow they probably won't have to ride. Then they've got a rest day after that. Then they've got two or three sprint days before the next hard day again. So, it's not like they haven't got time to recover. And don't forget when those two riders are riding the two main ones, Stark, Lang and Berg, everyone else is still hurting behind. Yeah. Like, everyone. Lot. Yeah, exactly. Lot, so, I mean. it's not just like those two are really doing all the work. Everyone in that peloton is hurting as well. So, they are hurting a lot of the other teams as well.
I tell you what, those final two kilometres, Jonathan, must have been a real morale zapper for everyone in that front group because you had Tiberi going off the front, Pogacar reels him back in again. We get timing going off the front, Pogacar reels him back in I again. I mean, reels him back in without even getting out of the saddle. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I mean, don't even know if he shifted. It was like, oh, that's too much effort. <laughs> yeah. But it was like he's playing a little game of chess with everybody and they're all the pawns and he's the chess master. Yeah, that must have been quite demoralising. For others watching, you know, Aronsman out of the saddle, full effort and Pogacar just... Twiddle, tickle the ivories and <laughs> straight into the wheel. And the others might go, oh, dear. <laughs>